Hi everyone, this is Ramalinga Prasad Kuppa. Welcome to my channel Pharma World. Today's topic is equipment qualification, design qualification, and this is the part one. In this part of equipment qualification, let us try to understand the design qualification aspects. The guideline says, before starting process validation activities, appropriate qualification of critical equipment and ancillary systems should be completed. Qualification is usually carried out by conducting the following activities individually are combined. This is the prescription under section 12.30 of ICH Q7. The guideline also says the design qualification which is abbreviated as DQ is a documented verification that the proposed design of the facilities, equipment or systems is suitable for the intended purpose. In this part one of the video, the salient features of design qualification will be discussed. The guideline ICH Q7 prescribes that before starting the process validation, it is necessary to qualify the equipment used for manufacturing. Appropriate qualifications establish that the design of the facility equipment is suitable for the activity to be performed. Qualifications must be completed before the process validation. There is a flexibility on timing. The qualifications may be completed individually or combined. But it is recommended to carry out each type of qualification individually if there is adequate time is available. If the time availability is the constraint, then all the qualifications may be completed at once as a combined activity. But it is important to note that the sequence of qualifications should start with design followed by installation and operation. Performance qualification could be integrated into the process validation. Let us understand the first aspect of qualification, the design qualification. It is a documented verification. That means all the critical information has to be recorded as a document on time. Proposed design aspects should be extended to facilities also. Facilities include the building infrastructure, necessary support systems, clean rooms, etc. It is easier to qualify facility design by a separate document as it may deal only with the building infrastructure. Systems may include routine generic operating systems to comply to the GMP. Let us see what the path forward is. Design qualification is a confirmation that the equipment is suitable for the intended purpose. So, approving of the design qualification is to confirm without any ambiguity that the design is suitable for the intended purpose. The confirmation of the design is carried out with challenge test. How do we qualify? It is a challenge test against a set of questions of a syllabus. So if you pass the test against the challenges, you are considered as qualified. The same type of concept is valid here too. Challenge is done with a set of questions to establish the suitability. URS specifications are drafted based on the functional capability of 
important aspects of the purpose of the equipment. The design should be based on the syllabus which is called URS, the user requirement specifications. In real life situation also, if you want to buy a car or even a simple electronic appliance, you look for features in which you are interested in and the purpose for which it is being purchased. So obviously the user should specify the actual design features suitable for the operational requirements. A detailed and comprehensive URS must be drafted to get the suitable equipment. This is the first step of qualification. Appropriate air quality is also a part of the clean room design. So designing of clean rooms should be based on the room area, flow pattern, number of air changes, viable and non-viable particle count, sink or bubble airlock systems. This will be very critical for aseptic product manufacturing. Let us understand the requirement more. Equipment used in the manufacture of intermediates and APIs should be of appropriate design and adequate size and suitably located for its intended use, cleaning, sanitization, where appropriate and maintenance. Section 5.10 of ICHQ7 prescribes that the equipment used in the manufacture of intermediates and APIs should be of appropriate design and adequate size and suitably located for its intended use, cleaning, sanitization and maintenance. The production related equipment design largely depends on the type of reactions and the type of materials being processed. It is also necessary to decide on the size of the equipment. The size of the equipment totally depends on the processing volumes of the proposed product. As a general thumb rule, design of any equipment depends on the input and output requirements. Design qualification should also include for confirmation of adequate space for cleaning of the equipment, maintenance of the equipment, such type of activities in addition to the use for production activity. Also, the equipments should be constructed so that the surfaces that contact the raw materials, intermediates or APIs do not alter the quality of the intermediates and APIs beyond the official or other established specifications. Accordingly, it is necessary to decide on the type of equipment, its MOC, material of construction. MOC is decided on the type of chemistry of the process. For example, a glass lined equipment is used for highly acidic reactions. A stainless steel equipment is used for highly alkaline reactions. This is how it is decided. Section 5.11 should be understood this way. Let us try to understand more on the qualification. Production equipment should only be used within its qualified operating range. Section 5.12 indicates that the equipment should be operated within the qualified range. Design qualification should address the capability of the equipment in the entire process range. And the equipment should be used within the qualified range only. This information should be documented fully. Closed 
or contained equipment should be used whenever appropriate. Where open equipment is used or equipment is opened, appropriate precautions should be taken to minimize the risk of contamination. So the design of the equipment that has to be installed in open should be evaluated for potential contamination and deterioration of the material. To the extent possible, closed equipment should be used. So the design aspects should focus on this critical point. In most of the powder processing equipment, the equipment is operated in open conditions. Examples of open equipment include a centrifuge, tray dryer, a nuge filter, the milling equipment, etc. In such instances, the external atmosphere, the room has to be designed with proper air quality. For such equipment, discussion on clean rooms must be included in the design aspects. Clean rooms could be a 5 micron filtered air or more stringent HEPA filter depending upon the product manufactured. But all these aspects has to be done using a detailed risk assessment. This is the prescription in section 5.13. A set of current drawings should be maintained for equipment and critical installations, example instrumentation and utility systems. Design qualification should have the approved drawings and as-built drawings. The as-built drawing means the drawing if there are any modifications done. So it is a revised drawing as-built. Whenever there is a change, the current drawing should be attached to the design qualification file. The file has to be updated every time of a change. This is the prescription in section 5.16. I hope you understood the basic requirements of a design qualification. And if you go through all these points, you will be able to carry out the design qualification effectively. I'll try to describe more on other qualifications of installation, operation and performance in coming up video parts, part 2, part 3 and part 4. Thanks for watching. For more videos, Please do subscribe, like and share. Thank you.